So let's take a look at what Regan found. On the y-axis, we have the average number of tickets bought by the participants. On the x-axis, the three different favour conditions. When the confederate does the participant a favour and buys a drink for them, when the confederate doesn't buy a drink, so there's no favour, and the final control condition, which was when the experimenter is the one who gives the participant the drink. What about the manipulation of how nice the confederate was? Well, you can't see it on the graph because the pleasantness of the confederate actually made no difference to these results, so I've left it off to keep things simple. As you can see on this graph, people who'd received the soft drink from the confederate bought more raffle tickets. Actually, participants who had been given the soft drink bought twice as many raffle tickets than did the other participants. And it wasn't about just receiving a soft drink from anyone that made them buy more tickets. When they got a drink from the experimenter, it didn't make them more likely to buy the raffle tickets from the confederate. Now, why do you think they did this? You might be thinking, well, that's obvious because someone who does something nice for you, you like them more. You want to do nice things for people you like. The curious thing is the experimenter actually asked people how much they liked the confederate. Some people liked the confederate a lot, some people not so much. But there was no relationship between how much people liked the confederate and how much they spent on the raffle tickets. Whatever's going on here, it's not about liking. So now let's talk about a study by Berry and Knauss in 1987. In their study, liking is probably not going to be a factor. They got compliance through reciprocation without even being there in person. In this study, they mailed physicians a long questionnaire that was somewhat onerous to complete. In one condition, they included a $20 check as a gift with the questionnaires. And in another, they said that the $20 check would be mailed upon completion of the questionnaire. This was their payment manipulation. The financial outcome for participants was largely the same. If the participants completed the questionnaire, they received $20 in either condition. However, the meaning of the $20 differed between the two conditions. In the first condition, it was a gift, and as a gift, it was to be kept whether the participants chose to complete the survey or not. In the second condition, it was a reward or compensation for completing the survey. So which condition produced the greatest compliance with the request to complete the survey? Well, on the y-axis, we have the percentage of physicians who completed and returned the surveys. On the x-axis, we have the two conditions for the payment manipulation, those who received the $20 as a gift and those who received the $20 on completion. As you can see here, when the physicians received the $20 as a gift, 78% of them filled it out and sent it back. However, when they received the $20 on completion, only 66% of them returned the questionnaire. Interestingly, of those receiving the gift $20 check, 95% who completed the questionnaire cashed the check. Only 26% who did not complete the questionnaire cashed the check. So most people were honest and only cashed the gift check if they actually did the survey. This norm can be easily exploited by people who want to elicit donations or who want to sell you things. Can you think of examples where this is exploited when people give things and then ask for things in return?